Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn about the polygon mode. Uh, I guess if there are two or three keys in my keyboard that are uh, that the painting on was erased are W for move, uh, 2 for edge and 4 for polygon mode. So this is <laughs> one of the most used uh, sub-object modes uh, in edit poly. So this is very important. Let's uh, cut the uh, small talk and let's get into the subject. I'm going to apply an edit poly on top of the box and I'm going to hit 4 for the polygon mode. And in here you can see the uh, commands for uh, polygon subject mode, uh, which is also called edit polygons. Uh, you can see that we have insert vertex. I've talked about this a lot, so I I'm going to pass that. We have extrude in here. We've seen this too, but in in polygon mode we will use this a lot. So let me show this to you. Anyways, uh, we have extrude in here. You can just click on the command and click and drag on the face to create this uh, extra extrusion in here. Or you can just click on the settings and input a value in here. Like you can say that we want to extrude this 10 meters, for example. Uh, my units are as always in meters, I want to <laughs> change this to centimeters. I'm working with Unity, so uh, I always um, change these to meters after the lessons. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, dragging, I guess, whatever. Okay, we have uh, this extrusion and you can input some numbers and we have uh, another option in here, which is called extrusion method or extrusion mode, I guess. Uh, let me show what this does. Uh, let's create a cylinder. I'm going to add an edit poly. I'm going to hit 4 and select these faces. By the way, to select this as a loop, edge loop or uh, as a polygon loop, let's say, what you can do is you can just select a face, hold shift and click on the next face. Okay? Uh, it doesn't work just double clicking. Uh, double clicking selects the whole thing because it doesn't really know where to loop the polygon. It could loop both ways like this or this. So you could do this as well, or you could do this. So you need to select a second polygon to uh, tell Max where uh, to loop the polygon. Okay, now if I hit extrude, you will see that it's not behaving as expected. It's a little bit weird. It's extruding the faces, but it's extruding, extruding the faces towards a towards a um, direction. And uh, it won't work on uh, objects like th this because uh, if you have only one direction um, all of the polygons will uh, extrude through that direction but we have some other modes in here let's click and you can see that group normals local normals let's select this one yeah this looks much better you can see that it, the extrusion happens um, normal to any selected polygon and the third method is by polygon which results in a way as you see it doesn't join these or weld these vertices, it uh, extrudes the faces separately, as you can see. Uh, we have another value in here. Let me see what this does. I really don't know. This uh, this is a new uh, thing. I don't know. Well, it doesn't really <laughs> change that much, I guess. Okay, uh, this is the modes of extrusion in polygon mode. What outline does is let's select this top face and click on outline. You will see that this creates an offset uh, kind of a thing. Like if you're an AutoCAD user, you know uh, what I'm talking about by offset. It uh, offsets or not really scales because uh, right now this looks like a scale uh, thing. But let me show this to you in a different type of a an object. Let's add a new edge loop and let's extrude this face. Now, uh, if we select this top face, for example, and outline this, you will see that it doesn't really scale, but it offsets it. Like uh, you can see that uh, it's just like a roof, I guess in here. Uh, what it does is it uh, creates these corners and just insets uh, the face inwards or outwards if you input uh, negative values it will do it inwards if you input positive values it will do it outwards 
and it will uh, create a parallel uh, edges and then join the faces i guess that's uh, how i explain it uh, this is very cool but outline uh, in itself is not that useful but we, uh, in a minute you will see that or in a second i guess you will see that extrude and outline are joined in another comment which is bevel which is very very useful if you hit bevel instead of these two you can see that we oh, we have extrude and outline in one comment and which is very cool if you uh, increase the height this is an extrusion if you increase the outline this is a, an outline and you can see that we can create a lot of interesting shapes with this i can hit the apply and continue button for example and just keep on creating different shapes uh, you can see that right away we have created something interesting okay so what bevel does is it combines extrude and outline in one comment and i really like the uh, this tool i use it a lot so inset uh, inset is also very useful uh, let's say we are trying to create a window for example a frame uh, let's uh, re really try to do that i'm going to hit f for this i'm going to create a box and let's uh, input some uh, dimensions for this 150 120 and 4 for example and i'm going to move this to the origin and this is what i have and now if i hit uh, add and edit poly select both of these faces this one and this one and hit inset you can see that it instantly creates this frame or case around it and you can just then bridge it and create this uh, frame like uh, object uh, these type of shapes we have them a lot so i guess this is very useful uh, another uh, interesting thing you can do is you can connect these fa these faces connect these faces and do the same thing for all of these faces let's try to inset them and again we have modes for inset as well if you can inset it as a group like this or you can do it by polygon and you can see that now we have uh, separated frames for all the uh, edges and then we can hit bridge and create this type of a shape okay uh, you can think of many more uh, shapes like this but for now i'm just gonna pass it we are going to use these tools in a lot of uh, examples in the upcoming lessons so don't worry we will uh, memorize these uh, let's create another box and we have used bridge <laughs> uh, before i guess uh, i talk about it but uh, let's try it again in a different example if you create uh, a copy of this element for example you can uh, select these two faces and hit bridge and they will uh, it will join them as you see in the previous example you can do the bridge inwards as well like if i um let's hit two select this edge hit alt r connect with two edges and let's choose this face and this face and bridge you can see that you can do it inwards as well okay you don't have to bridge um, two separate elements you can bridge uh, in one element as well let me show another example if you extrude this by the way i've uh, assigned alt uh, t for extrude uh, so i'm uh, using that shortcut uh, you can do it as well uh, let, we will talk about that in another lesson but uh, I guess I've shown you how to assign shortcuts, so points for me. So I've hit two, hit uh, select these two edges, hit Alt R, and connect them. And then I can just hit four and select these two uh, faces and bridge them. And you can see that uh, we can use bridge in the same element as well. We don't need two separate elements. We only need two separate faces, I guess. And I recommend you to make them look at each other, the faces, uh, or otherwise it may end up in weird results like this. So try to use uh, faces that are facing each other. Uh, okay. If I bridge this, uh, there are some other things in here. So let me show those to you. If I increase the segments, you can see that we can add segments uh, on these faces. I can increase taper, which will create shapes like these which are which looks cool 
Um, what is that? Ah, okay. Uh, I, I see what bias is now. Uh, you can see that we can um, change the center point of that um, narrowness and uh, with playing with this bias option. I still can't understand what bias does in extrude, but whatever. You can smooth the end result. Uh, you can twist the bridge, as you can see. And we can add two twists. Hmm, interesting, you can add two twists. Um, and yeah, hit uh, OK. Uh, I guess uh, there's no point in uh, confusing you <laughs> even further. Uh, there are a lot of different tools, uh, but they're not most uh, commonly used. You usually need them in specific situations, and nearly all the time you can uh, have a, you can find out a workaround. You can find different uh, things without using these uh, tools, but they I guess they help you speed up the process. Uh, yeah. I guess. But you don't have to learn them all at once, I guess. Okay, uh, what flip does is it uh, flips the... Uh, in 3ds Max, polygons or faces have one um, outer face, let's say, one outer side, actually. Now, if I delete this uh, face, for example, you can see that we see uh, dark uh, uh, faces inside, because these faces or these sides of these faces are inwards faces and they are just black. They don't catch the light as the way these outer faces do. So what you can do is you can just flip the uh, polygons. If uh, if we are going to render this from here, for example, if you flip these, uh, you can see that we can see the inner faces uh, of the polygons inside. Okay. And if I select this again and flip, you can see that now we see a dark face because the inner faces are, or the, the right side, let's say. The right side is uh, looks outward right now, okay? Uh, you can do this uh, for separate uh, or individual polygons as well. If I select these, I can just flip them, and you can see that these this face, the, this right side looks outwards, but this face's right side look inwards, okay? Hinge from edge. These are a little bit less less used uh, tools, I guess. But let me show those to you anyway. These two. Uh, if you hinge from edge, you can see that uh, it creates a hinge like this. It uh, creates a triangle face, I guess, in the uh, on the edge. Uh, how I change the pivot point or turning uh, point is I clicked on this and then hit S and select a corner vertex. And you can see that it changes the hinge uh, axis. And you can change that uh, this way. Uh, you can do this inverse as well. Okay. Again, you can create this shape uh, with different methods. Like, for example, let me show you. If I delete this, I can hit 2, select this, hold shift and create an edge inwards. I'm going to hold control and select this edge and bridge it. And then select these two and cap them. You, you can say that it took uh, much more comments, much more repeats to do this. Yeah, I know, but I never remember there's a tool called Hinge from Edge under the polygon mode. These, these tools uh, I've shown you are the most basic tools uh, in modeling. So uh, if you know edge extrusion, if you know how to close gaps, if you know how to bridge two edges, then you can model anything. You don't need to memorize that there is a tool called Hinge from Edge under polygon. So I can just create a shape like this. It's it, this this shape. You will come across this shape like uh, I guess once a month. I don't know once a year. Uh, so uh, I guess it's a little weird to memorize those things. I I recommend you to learn the basic tools, the basic shapes, basic methods to create these type of things. And edge extrusion is the I guess the most basic thing you can think in uh, edit poly modeling. And you can change the hinge later on the hinge value. Uh, with this as well, ah, we we forgot to decrease the segments in bridge. So yeah, you can change the hinge uh, value with like this as well. Okay. All right. Now we had one more tool, uh, extra the spline. Uh, let's see this as well. Let's create a spline like this. And I want to extrude this face. 
along the spline. Let's see what it does. Uh, you can see that because I've uh, created this from the front view and this from the uh, top view, it behaves a little bit weird. So let's try to keep the X size straight. I'm going to delete this, hit F. Now let's create something like this and see what this does now. Yeah, uh, uh, actually it behaves a little bit weird again. Uh, the reason this time is because we need this normal. Uh, we did, we need this uh, edge to be normal to this polygon in here. I guess this time it will work. You can see that I never use these tools, but whatever. Yeah, <laughs> this time it works. Uh, you can what it, you can see what it does. It just uh, extrudes this uh, polygon along the this spline, the guide spline we uh, gave uh, to 3ds Max, we told to use. And uh, you can see that we can instantly create a an extrusion like this. And for this as well, I, I would, uh, if I want to sh create a shape like that, I would delete this face, I would go to the border mode, and I would hold shift and just go ahead and create this. And I do, I feel like I have more control over this as well. And once you get used to it, it doesn't take that much time, by the way, it always, uh, it, in my opinion, it's easier. Um, anyways. Okay, these are the tools under uh, edit, uh, under the polygon mode. Uh, now let's create a, a, a new example again, uh, which will uh, help us, I guess, understand and get used to the tools. Uh, for that, I have a reference again. Uh, we are going to model a stair. Let's, I guess these these look like uh, joint objects. They don't have that much of a seam in between. So uh, I want to uh, try to mold these in one go. And I'm going to just get the box tool. Let's create a box. And let's uh, set the values to 120. Uh, for the width, I want to input uh, 32, and for the height, I want to input 18. Now I'm going to add an edit poly on top, hit 4, and extrude this. Uh, actually, let's use bevel. I'm going to just uh, go up uh, just a little bit, and then go uh, introduce an outline. I'm going to hit apply and continue. This time I'm going to zero the outline value and increase the extrusion value. I'm going to add an outline again, and this time I'm going to pull it inwards. And uh, now I want to make the backside uh, straight. So I'm what I'm going to do, which you can use uh, as well. This is a very cool trick. You can hit four and select the back faces. I guess my computer is going to blow up and uh, hit R for scale and just scale this in, which will straighten out the face. Uh, this is a tool I use a lot, a trick I use a lot in uh, Edit Poly. You can see that we have a straight face on the backside there. And then what we can do is like we can hit, hit, uh, hit S, uh, hold this and just copy this uh, on this corner in here and create 11 stairs, for example. And you can see that we have that right away. Okay. Uh, you could just uh, put a new object in here or you can join these as well. Uh, let's undo this. I'm going to do this, this again and um, create them as uh, copy objects, not instance objects. Because after, uh, if you use instance objects, it, it uh, behaves a little bit weird if you attach them. Uh, let me copy, create 11 copies again. And I'm going to hit attach list and select all these boxes. Now I can hit F, uh, hit one and select all these vertices. Uh, I guess I can scale them. Let's maybe pull them down a little bit. Ah, sorry, I need to choose these as well. Okay, so let's select polygons it will be better uh, easier 
try to scale them uh, because these are separate they don't really scale maybe rotate them yeah uh, this this works cool you can rotate them and scale them up yeah this could also work uh sorry scale them in 2x size only it's a weird way to do this i wouldn't do it like this but yeah this works as well uh, we did some uh, edit poly exercises which is cool i guess i would uh, create these two in separate uh, as separate objects i would create this as a separate ob object as well <laughs> to be honest uh, let, let's fix this uh, side as well okay i'm going to <laughs> finish this lesson before my computer gets blown uh, you can just draw a line and align these vertices to that line as well okay let's do that I don't know what's going on. Okay, I'm going to fix one or two of these and you will see what I mean. I'm afraid to lose the recording up to this point. Yeah, you can see what I do. I guess you can complete this, but whatever, you can finish this like that. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. If you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. See you in the next lesson.